All right, we're at uh, section 35.3, images formed by refraction. And we're gonna start off with a image that late may look uh, unusual. And you say, Mr. Menchaga, when are we ever gonna see a, uh, a lens like that? And I know you're not seeing the lens yet, but let me give you a little precursor. Uh, this is a little paperweight that I got, probably got it from NASA. Uh, I don't really remember, but it's just a piece of plexiglass. You can, if you look on the side, you can see the, the little flat, uh, image of the space shuttle, um, and uh, it's just it's just plastic. I don't know what the index of refraction is, but it's a kind of a, a semicircle, uh, as you can see. And and let's look at the effect of uh, of this device here. Let's move this further, like this, and uh, you can see that it it kind of magnifies the the grid behind it. You can see that uh, it just kind of uh, magnifies the grid. So that's that's kind of the uh, situation that we have. Uh, now let's go to share the the screen with the PowerPoint and that there you can see that this this uh, um, little Paperweight is similar to this. As a matter of fact, the example problem, the even example problem I'm going to do is exactly of a, a paperweight. Um, so the, the uh, uh, you can follow that example. Okay, rays making small angles with the principal axis diverge from a point object at O and are refracted through the image point point I. Now. Uh, we start off with a little uh, quick quiz. In the figure, what happens to the image point as the object point uh, O is moved to the right from very far away to very close to the refracting surface? It is always to the right of the surface. It is always to the left of the surface. It starts off to the left and move, and, and at some position of O, I moves to the right of the surface. It starts off to the right, and at some position of O, I moves to the left of the surface. Well, I would have, uh, just intuitively, I would have said A, it's always to the right of the surface, but that's not the case. Uh, it's actually D, it starts off to the right, and at some position of O, I moves to the left of the surface. And I had a hard time with that, so I did a, uh, uh, a, little, a little graph uh, here I just use n1 equals uh, air, 1.0, uh, n2 equals 1.5, which is glass, and a radius of 0 .10, 0 0.10 meters, 10, 10 centimeters, uh, 100 millimeters. Uh, and you can see that the, if the object, the, we have object distance p here on, in meters, and uh, image distance q in meters. And you can see that as the object, is uh, one meter away, the the uh, the image distance is some way way down there. I mean, it's it's like I don't know. I'm gonna guess about 20 centimeters. I don't, I don't really recall. I have the data. I should look it up. Uh, and as we start moving the the object closer and closer and closer, um, you can see that it just it it, it blows up uh, the the image distance becomes very far away. But there's a point here that happens to be at 0.2 um, meters, 20 centimeters, where it, kind of like when we were looking at the concave mirror and as I approached it, there was a point where it just kind of blew up and reversed. Uh, well, a similar thing happens here. Um, there's a, a point, it happens to be at 0.2 meters uh, where, where you get a reversal. I mean, uh, the Previously, I had plotted this and I made it all one curve, but that was deceptive because it went from here to here. It doesn't really go from there to there. As a matter of fact, if you, if you put a point, uh, if you put the object at point to zero, you'll get a divide by zero error. So the, there's a point where no image uh, occurs. And then all of a sudden it goes to the, uh, you can see that the image distance goes negative. So the, the, uh, the image distance as you approach this point two gets very very large and which is very uh, far from the uh, 
uh, from the surface and then all of a sudden it becomes negative and it goes to the other side of the surface it's a virtual image on the on the front side of the uh, of the surface of the prism uh, okay so let's let's do a little bit of analysis um, and uh, we know that n1 sine of theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Now, in the small angle approximation, uh, theta, sine theta 1 equals theta 1, and sine theta 2 equals theta 2. So given that small angle approximation, uh, you, you can get uh, n1 theta 1 equals n2 uh, theta two, and I, you know, I'm I'm going to take some time uh, to let's look at the uh, um, iPad. I drew this out. Um, and here I have a, a uh, now it, I didn't mention that theta e, theta one equals sine theta one and theta two equals sine theta two. That's for theta represented in uh, radians. In degrees, it doesn't work. You have to represent it in radians. And if you recall, the uh, arc length, uh, which is uh, the, the radians, is uh, s equal r theta. Um, and so the, you can see, if I blow this way up, the if we look at the triangle here made up of with the opposite side being the green, the arc length is S. Oop, you can see there's very, I have to find it again. Oh, there it is. I skipped a page. Uh, you can see that the, uh, the arc length S and the adjacent side, which is green in this, there's very little difference between them. Um, and let's assume that uh, we have a, uh, uh, if we have a unit circle, then the hypotenuse is one. So uh, uh, the green over one and, and S are very, uh, they're, they're very close. So it's a small angle approximation. Um, so let's, let's uh, go back to the, um, to the PowerPoint. And so we know that for, for small angles, and we'll see later that it's, about angles less than 15 degrees, but they're, they're probably talking about angles less than that. Um, sine theta one equals theta one, and sine theta two equals theta two. So we just use the theta here. N one theta one equals N two theta two. Uh, and uh, theta, theta one, which is over here, you can see that on this dotted line, well, it's a, Theta one plus this angle over here uh, it equals 180 degrees. Well, so do alpha plus beta. Alpha and beta are uh, they have to equal the, uh, uh, the, the this angle in here. Uh, no, I mean I'm sorry, but the the sum of these angles has to be equal to theta one. So uh, theta one equals alpha plus beta. And beta is over here is equal to uh, theta two pl plus gamma uh, because it that this uh, this here equals 180. So this plus this plus uh, or 180 minus this equals these two. So beta equals theta two plus gamma. Now, if we do that, if we do a substitution um and do a little bit of algebra we get the n1 alpha plus n2 gamma equals n2 minus n1 beta uh, we also assume a small angle equivalency for tangent tangent alpha is equal to uh, to uh alpha is approximately equal to alpha is approximately equal to d over p that's this d over p that's approximately alpha for small angles uh, it's probably exaggerated here in the figure and tangent of beta is equal to d over r you can see r right here and tangent gamma 
is equal to D over uh, Q. And what do they all have in common? They all have a, a D um, uh, in common. So if we make that substitution into this, um, this, this equation up here, we'll get N1 N sub one over P plus N sub two over Q equals N sub two minus N sub one divided by R. Um, and the magnification it normally is minus Q over P or minus H prime over H, but it's also minus Q over P. Here it's modified, M is equal to minus N1Q divided by N2P. Uh, and that, that's the magnification. Now here, well, I'm gonna give you an equation in the lecture notes where we solve for Q, the image distance, because you're gonna be doing that for some of your homework assignment. Okay, and here's, here's a little table the showing the small angle approximation. Uh, these are in degrees, uh, and these are in radians, and this is sine theta, and this is the, the error you get, the error you get if you uh, uh, substitute um, theta for sine theta, and you can see that it's not until you get to uh, like 14 degrees that you get uh, a 1% error. It's less than less than 1% all up here above. Now, it's even better for tan, tangent theta, tangent theta equal theta. Um, if you make that substitution, even at 15 degrees, you, you've only got a 0 0.061, uh, I wonder if that's 0.61. Um, but point, uh, you, you get a small error. I mean, not have multiplied by uh, 100. Um, well, let's just go on. If, if it's incorrect, I'll I'll put it in the uh, I'll correct it in the uh, uh, PowerPoint notes that I deliver. Okay, he, these are the sign conventions: uh, object location, image location, image height, and radius for this equation that we'll be using. And over. N1 over P plus N2 over Q equals N2 minus N1 over R. Um, all of these are positive. The object is in front of the surface. It's a real object. The image is in back of the surface. It's a real image. Um, the image is upright it's, if, if it's positive. Uh, the center of curvature is in the back of the surface. And they're negative. In this case, the object is in back of the surface. Well, this this object uh, that's embedded in here, this is in back of the surface. Um, the uh, I don't think that's what they're talking about, though. They're talking about when, when the, the virtual image. The image is in front of the surface. Uh, negative, it's a virtual image. The image is inverted, and the center of curvature is in front of the surface. That would be like a concave um, uh, piece of glass. Okay, the image is formed by refraction. Well, we, we uh, this isn't the three, the three ray uh, vector, you know, the three ray construction that we did in the lab, but it's, it's similar. It's similar to what they did when they were looking at lenses. The image due to the surface is real, so I is to the right of the surface. So you can see that they, they do have the chief ray that goes from the top of the object through the center and to the tip of the image. And then you have the ray that is uh, parallel, um, parallel to the, the, the uh, primary axis, the central axis, the, the, the primary axis is parallel and is be, because of refraction, it goes through the focal point and to the top of the image. And then the image, uh, when the object is, um, when it's beyond a certain uh, point, the image due to the surface is virtual, so I is to the left of the image. And the same thing here, you can see the, the, the chief axis, the, the chief uh, ray goes through the center and back, and here's the, it intersects with the image here, and here it goes uh, forward and uh, through the radius of curvature, it's not drawn to scale, and the back side of it goes to the image, and it's a virtual image. Now let's see. Um, you have we have that equation, and 
N1 uh, divided by P plus N2 divided by Q equals N2 minus N1 uh, divided by R. Now, if Q is large, if Q goes to infinity, then P equals N1, uh, in other words, this disappears. If Q goes up, this gets very small. Uh, so if it goes to infinity, it disappears. And you're left with N1 over P equals N2 minus N1 over R. And gives you P equals N1 divided by N2 minus N1 times R. Uh, and this is a situation where the, uh, I believe it's where the object is actually inside. I'm not going to worry about it much. We're not going to, I don't think we're going to have a problem with that. Um, and then for flat reflecting, refracting surfaces, what is R? What is the radius? Well, the radius becomes infinity. If, if it's a flat surface, there is no R. And so this equation, N1 over P plus N2 over Q equals N2 minus N1 divided by R. If R goes to infinity, it's simply N1 over P equals minus N2 um, divided by Q, or Q is equal to the uh, minus uh, N2 over N1 uh, times P. And they have the sign convention, you can read that. Um, and then we have a quick quiz. In the figure, what happens to the image point as the object point O moves toward the right hand surface of the material of index of refraction N1. Now notice that the object is inside the refractive, uh, the refractive uh, portion. Uh, it's, uh, and here it's, it's uh, N1 is, is, is uh, greater than N2 and the object is in the greater, uh, it would be like if it was in water or something like that. It always remains between O and the surface, arriving at the surface just as O does. It moves toward the surface more slowly than uh, O, so that it eventually, uh, oh, I expose it, so that eventually O passes I. It approaches the surface and then moves to the right of the surface. Well, it would get, imagine seeing a fish in, in water, because the water has a greater uh, index of refraction than air. You're never going to see an image of the fish above so it's a it always remains between o and the surface arriving at the surface just as o does um just as the op, uh, object distance arrives okay and we're going to stop there and then we're going to go on to the 35.4 images formed by thin lenses